this is uh, the graphql.org homepage. And this is a great place to start people off when it comes to GraphQL because a lot of people have heard of GraphQL. It's a big you know, thing. It's a big talking point. There's lots of companies. There's lots of open source projects. There's a lot of stuff happening around GraphQL. It'd be hard to wrap your mind around all of it and really get a handle on what it is. So I think it's good to kind of break it down to like the thing itself, which is just a very simple specification for querying APIs. It's a query language for your API, as it says here on the GraphQL homepage. And this is the simplest kind of hello world GraphQL example you could imagine where we're first creating a schema right here. This is a project type and that project, it has a name and the name is a string. So it's some text. And then the project also has a tagline, which is also a string. And then the project has a list of contributors and that list of contributors are each individual user objects. And that's what this right here is. It's like an array of user objects. So we're not seeing the whole schema right here. We need also a user object, but the, the simple kind of just query that we could do right now is we could ask for a specific project. So we're asking for a project and we're asking for the name of that project, which is GraphQL. And then we want the tagline or so, so this is the input. So we're giving it the input, which is the project name, GraphQL, and we're asking for the tagline. So the tagline is a query language for APIs. So this is kind of the simplest GraphQL query you could possibly do. That's the query and that's the result. Now, once you go beyond kind of the very basics of GraphQL, you get all this stuff around how do you connect like a front end to a back end with GraphQL. And what's nice is that you can get into that without having to necessarily figure out how to do it yourself with certain frameworks and projects that have done it for you. So this is Redwood JS, which is how I really got my entrance into this whole open source world and GraphQL, especially I was learning Redwood before I really knew what GraphQL was. I had a kind of a vague idea of it because I built those things like podcasts about GraphQL. I've listened to many, many podcasts and have now hosted and guests on many, many podcasts. But what's really cool about Redwood is that it does this whole data integration front to back for you with a React front end and then a GraphQL middle layer with Prisma as an ORM talking to your database. And there's this kind of high level architectural diagram explaining how it all works. And this could be a little overwhelming the first time you look at it, but the, the really important stuff is, is here on the left, because this is your actual Redwood project structure and you have a, a front end and a back end. And if you've ever used something like a next API, like serverless functions kind of thing, that's, that's fairly similar to what's going on here, except it's giving you a lot more of that kind of API backend already built out for you with an entire GraphQL like serverless function handler, which we'll, we'll get into once we actually start building out the project. But the front end is, is very familiar to anyone who's ever worked with a React front end, whether that's create React app or Gatsby or Next, anything that's, you know, it's a, it's a folder that has things like pages and uh, components and layouts and you have your styling, your CSS, all that is in, is in your front end. And that's being served on a static CDN host, like a, you know, Netlify or Vercel. And then your, your back end is this whole API serverless GraphQL function handler. And this is where the, the steps and stuff is going to come in. So we're going to essentially insert a steps in. API gateway in between these two pieces. And so that's where steps and comes in, which is a GraphQL API that stitches together all of your backends. So this will be very similar to the, the kind of T-shaped uh, mesh stuff that we were looking at, which is cool because I'm someone who actually really enjoy seeing similar projects and comparing them to each other. Like, like on my podcast, one of the main things we do is we compare like Redwood to Blitz and to Bison. And now there's things like Wasp and there's, there's all these other frameworks that are all kind of spinning around the same ideas and the same kind of technology. And it's, it's really useful to actually like compare them to each other and wrap your mind around how they, how they work because 
you can start to ask more kind of like pointed questions about what each of them offer and what they don't and what they hook into and what they don't and what's the interface into them and, and all this kind of stuff. So we're going to be using a, a, a Shopify backend and all of this is going to be contained in this repo here, the uh, steps in dash Redwood. We have these steps and samples here, which is uh, a lot of just example projects that we're building out to kind of show how you work with this stuff and how you can stitch it all together and different ways to do it with different frameworks. And there's a, a large variety of, of tools and, and ways of doing this. And so I think it's really useful to be able to kind of compare them to each other. But right now we are going to kick open a Redwood project. So Yarn Redwood Dev is going to start our Redwood development server. And right now we have nothing. This is just a blank Redwood front homepage. And if we wanted to start building out this project, we could do Yarn Redwood generate page home. And this is going to create a home page for us and it's going to set it to our home route. And so this will then set our home page to this. So if you look at our code over here, as I was talking about, we have this web side and then we have this API side. So right now let's just mess around in the, the website for a little bit because this is the part that is, I think, fairly intuitive to anyone who's ever worked with uh, React kind of front end. So we have components, pages, and this app.js. This app.js, this is our like root component. So the root component will have all the other child components within it. And we have the Redwood Apollo provider and you can actually swap this out for a React query provider. That's uh, one of the things that we're getting deeper and deeper into is decoupling out the different pieces of Redwood to make them swappable. And the, the server is going to do that fairly soon. But this is the real meat of your project, your routes. So right now we have this route that we created, which is our home page, and goes to that. So we could create another one we wanted to say create an about page we can do yarn redwood all your commands you gotta start with that you can also type out redwood like that but yarn redwood generate and then we're gonna generate a page and we're gonna generate an about page but we're not going to set a path because we want the path to be the same we want the path to be about we want the page to be the about page and so that's going to create another page right here about and then if we go here to about we'll see our about page and we can see all the places where about is inserted so that's pretty cool now we're going to look at kind of the the back end and we're going to build out our steps end back end now with steps end you're going to have an index.graphql and this is what essentially stitches together all of your your backend schemas. So if you wanted to have, say, uh, a user schema and a products schema and an orders schema, you can have all those, you can stitch them all together into this one unified backend. Now, just for kind of this project and simplicity's sake, we're only gonna have one, but that's why you have this file here to stitch all of your, your schemas together. But we're just gonna have this one product schema. And it's very simple. It's a, a product type. So this is what we were looking at on our, our GraphQL homepage. We had a project type, right? This is very, very similar. We have a product type and it's gonna have an ID, handle and title, just like how this one had a name, tagline and contributors. And then we're gonna have this query here. So this is where the kind of steps and magic comes in. Cause what we're doing here is we're using this at rest directive. So that's why my project is like, what is this? I don't know what this is. And it says this unknown directive at rest. And this is the what we're doing to connect into our Shopify backend. So we have this endpoint, which is being fed in the API key, the API password, and the store name, which is all contained in this config.yaml, which I can't show because it has my keys and you don't want to show your keys on the internet. So this is what 
I have in that file, that config.yaml, you have a configuration set and you pass in your key. So this is similar to what you saw in the previous presentation where you had that graphical user interface that allowed you to like put in your keys and stitch all that together. This is a very similar thing. And we're also building out GUIs to, to manage a lot of this as well. I, I like doing this in, in code. So that's why I'm kind of showing it this way, but it's a similar idea, which is just like, how do you manage all these environment variables and all these keys? And it's like, it's such a, it's such a pain because you it's, you know, it's a huge headache, especially when you have projects that have a lot of these. So we're, centralizing all of these and putting them into this one endpoint that you can then run this simple steps and start command to get going. So I think this is going to be all good to go. So now this is going to kick open an endpoint for us over here. And this is another graphical kind of editor thing, which is really cool. So on here on the left, you can see that we can actually use this to like create our queries over there. But let's say we don't have this over here. We can look at our docs and go to our queries. So we have, we know that we have products and our products have handle ID title, just like the kind of schema that we created before. And if we run that query, we're going to get back these titles which are contained in our Shopify backend. And this is from our previous Jamstack Toronto talk, shout out to Henri. <laughs> and now we have our steps in backend set up. We also have this endpoint here that we can query from our Redwood project. So to do that, we're going to start building out our Redwood API. And so in the Redwood API, we have all of this stuff. So this is that handler that I was talking about that stitches your whole backend together. So we see here we have, we're exporting this handler and we're using create GraphQL handler. And this is coming from the, the Redwood API package. And this is stitching together your backend so that you can do anything you want with like a serverless kind of GraphQL handler, which is really nice because it is what allows you to kind of like mask your keys, which we'll get into in a second. So let's first, okay, that's all good, that's all good. Okay, so our Redwood API side is going to have a schema, just like our steps in API had a schema, which is going to be product, has the same stuff that we had, the ID, handle, and title. And then we're going to create this query, which will be the products. So I'll save that. And to do this, we're going to basically make a GraphQL call from the back end. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You could do it with like node fetch or with GraphQL requests. That's how I'm going to do it. So it's just a kind of common, uh, like simple client that allows you to make GraphQL requests and this goes back to what you need to do with your with your keys. Cause when you do this kind of stuff, you can't do it from from the client because if you do it from the client, you're sending your your key that you get from steps in. And that's a, it's a private key. You don't want to expose that to the world. So if you put that in your front end, your website was being shipped to the client, then you could see that in your source maps. If you open up your developer tools, you can go into the code and actually find that kind of endpoint. So this is what makes the whole Redwood architecture is like already set up to do this for you. Already has this entire backend that allows you to make GraphQL calls and lets you deploy it very simply as something like a Netlify or a Vercel. And so it's it's really sweet. And we already have our I already set up the keys and then we the last thing we have to do is just create our services. And we're just going to have a single service, which is going to make a query into our backend asking for the products, much like we did with the, the regular steps and kind of editor. So now that we have that, we have a bit more products. And now that we get that all going, let's go here. And if we go to localhost 8911, we see our backend and we have this graphical editor here. 
and we can do the same thing. We can ask for our products. So we're going to do a query. This is the query we wanted. Bam. Okay, so let me restart server here. Okay, I know what step I missed. I forgot to rename. So I had one step here where we renamed the DB2 client. And that is just because it's not really a database anymore. It's the, the GraphQL client that's calling it. So it should be good to go now. Let me oh, just stop sharing for one second because then I'm going to check my keys to make sure those are all set up correctly. Are there any questions so far from what I have shown? Um, this might be a really newbie question. Um, so, mm -hmm. so obviously you're saying like, you know, when you're connecting to something like steps you don't want to expose your keys in the client. Right. Um, mm -hmm. and you're storing this in, in like a serverless or how, how are the key, how are the keys actually being managed? Like where are they stored and how are they, how do they interact? Yep. So there's the, there's the schema, there's the, there's the keys from steps in itself. So you're, hosting your API, your shop, your Shopify keys in the, the steps in API. And then you're, you're hosting the, the keys, your API keys that access steps in on something like a Netlify or a Vercel. So right now I'm just putting those in like a .env file mm -hmm. on my computer, which is, which is how we're going to actually access it from here. Gotcha. And then when like you host it on something like a, a Netlify or a Vercel, you're able to just basically plug it in to, to the, to like the, the dashboard kind of thing. Gotcha. And, and then they're only used on like the build process. Is that what, so like when you build the dashboard yep. exposes those keys and then it, it accesses the um, steps in. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, are there any more questions? I'm gonna do something real quick to kind of reset myself to, to get us back on track here. Um, I guess I had like a general like Redwood questions, um, but I don't want to detract you too much while you're, you're using your but brain. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, no, please, um, please ask me questions. Yeah, we got, sure. we got some time here for a second. I've... Yeah, okay. Um, so like, um, so you have like the, the serverless or the, I actually, I think like the functions folder, right? Um, so mm -hmm. this, is Redwood like, Redwood has some like serverless backend type stuff happening, right? And so instead of like managing your own, Kind of software stack in a whole like monolith or something like that. It's it's doing some serverless function calling. Is is that how Redwood works, or can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, that's where the the API kind of stitches together everything for you because it's deploying it onto Lambda via different kind of services. So you can there's different commands that'll kind of set you up to deploy it from like a netlify or a vercel or you could deploy it directly to a lambda mm -hmm. so what's kind of like your experience with like aws lambda and kind of like what that is like should i kind of explain like what that is yeah yeah that'd be great yeah so an aws lambda is what's called like kind of a functions as a service type idea so what it does is it allows you to run code that you would run on like a server, like a node server, but without having to have an always on server to, to do that. So this is really nice. It allows you to have a whole kind of like 
back end set up like an API without necessarily having to set that up and have it always running it. So you're paying based on just like your specific kind of function invocations. And so that's what it gets you set up with. That's like really nice and convenient. Mm -hmm. And then for them, I assume with Redwood, the, the lambdas are usually like node functions. They're not written in some other language or something, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's because we're using a lot of like node kind of libraries, like we're using things like, uh, uh, like Prisma, like we're using the Prisma client and that's all kind of, that's all baked in with the, the kind of like node stuff you need to, to make it work. Okay, sweet. Oh, we are back in business. All right, let me hop back in here. Okay, so share my screen. Okay, so now we have our whole backend set up and we want to do a query for our products. We have products query, title, ID, and handle. And when we do that, we get our hello Jamstack over here. And then the only other thing that's going on is our homepage, which has our products cell. And the products cell is what's going to query our backend and then display it on our front end. So we have our steps in API and our steps in API connects to our Redwood API, which we just did the query from, and then our Redwood website where we were creating the pages and whatnot can do a GraphQL query, which is what's happening here. This is the same query we were doing on our back end here. And that query then has different states it can be in. So this is why we say a cell makes your data fetching declarative because you could basically tell it whether it's loading, empty, failure, success. So if it's loading, We'll have a little loading message here. If it's empty, it'll say we need products. And if it's failure, it gives you the error message. Or we just want to render our products on the screen. So we're going to map over our products because we're getting an array of products. And that is happening right here. And then we can kind of see that query happening if we look at our dev tools in the network, we can see the actual GraphQL request that's happening and the data that we get back. Cool. All right, we made it. Okay, any questions? That's awesome. Thanks so much, Anthony. That was a really great presentation. Um, yeah. So Tristan had a question uh, over here in the chat. I can read it to you. Um, so does Redwood have adapters to other serverless providers such as Cloudflare or Microsoft? It's a great question. And I have been working with some people at Microsoft and Cloudflare to kind of make this happen in terms of getting these types of adapters built. We're not there yet. And they will likely become a larger priority post V1. The problem is that Azure functions and Lambda functions are not really that similar. They like they pass in different objects in terms of like context objects and event objects, and there's this very very like weird impedance impedance mismatch between the two. So you have to essentially decouple out the the current Redwood API setup, which is the Apollo Server Lambda library, because that's tightly coupled to Lambda specifically. So or possibly going to get to a point very soon where we're going to have a swappable kind of server, like we have the, the client swappable, and then that will make it easier to use something like Lambda. And then Cloudflare, Cloudflare is a whole different story because you were asking Jim about the, the node kind of kind of backend, and that's the problem with Cloudflare, is that Cloudflare doesn't actually give you node at all. Like it's, it's running on V8. And so some people will get kind of confused by this because they're like, okay, like Cloudflare runs on V8 and Node runs on V8. So you can run Node on, on Cloudflare. And that's, actually, that's not how it works at all. You can't run Node on Cloudflare. It's a whole different thing. And so there's a lot of libraries that you don't have access to. But what you can do is you can 
start to break off different pieces of your your API because right now we're doing this thing called the Lambda lift. Like when we're looking at the the whole GraphQL handler that's created in the back end, this is actually considered an anti pattern in serverless to have your entire project be one giant Lambda that you like shove online and then just like hit as a single endpoint because you you get like cold start issues and you you all this stuff kind of spins out from that. So you want to break it off into smaller individual functions at a certain point. And so this is where the, the Cloudflare stuff is going to come in and start to be really handy. But um, this is all kind of like future stuff at this point, but it's very interesting. Oh, that's it. That's, so that is interesting. So right now Redwood kind of like puts the backend as an app that gets deployed as one function. Is that what it is? But in the future, it's it, the idea is to break it into many functions for different tasks. Yeah, so right now it is deployed as a single giant GraphQL handler mm -hmm. on Lambda. So you can do that via something like a Netlify or a Vercel or straight to Lambda itself. But that is what it's built for. And now you, you can run it as a container. And this is something that actually a lot of people are doing and it's become a lot easier to do with something like Render. So now you can actually just serve the backend as like a serverful backend, which is kind of hilarious because mm -hmm. Redwood was architected from the beginning to be this whole kind of like serverless thing. And then people hacked it to make it serverful. <laughs> and so now you can run it on render as just an always on like API server that is running Redwood. And it's using like PM2, which is a, a node process manager. So you can do that if you want to. And that's if you're actually getting like a production scale, that's what you'll you'll likely end up doing. So find this middle ground between serverful, serverless, container, lambda, like and and now you can like you can run containers on lambda and you can run lambda on containers. So this this all these things are getting like weirdly mishmashed between each other. And it's just gonna depend on your application and what it needs and what you know personally, what you're comfortable setting up, what you're what you're comfortable wiring up your your app to do, what services you already know. There's there's a lot of kind of contextual stuff baked into when you need to make that switch from serverless to serverable. Awesome. Um, do folks have other questions? Um, Anthony, I have one last question. Um, so, so mm -hmm. like, um, it, obviously, you, there was some setup, I'm sure, for the demo. Um, I'm curious. Um, so, like the Shopify backend stuff in Stepsend, what does that look like to like actually connect to that through Stepsend stuff? Is it is it all like um, stuff that you're doing through your project, or is there something in the the interface through Stepsend that you're you're doing ahead of time to connect those things, or? Yeah, so the code I saw you was was all of it. It was, oh, really? it wow. was yeah, it was a little strange and fumbly because of the, the key management. But but when I showed you like the product type and then that query where you plug in the endpoint, like that's the entire thing. And then you just <laughs> run the command and then you're hooked up to the back end. So like so what I showed you is all the code that we saw is all it took to get connected to the back end. Wow. And the reason why is because they there are built in schemas and templates for different backends. So there's uh, a whole repository of those, which includes things like Shopify and Mailchimp and a lot of these like common Jamstack kind of backends that have already figured out how to map your keys. And then you just give it that YAML, which feeds in your keys, and then that stitches together your whole backend for you. And then when you run the steps and start command, it spins up your API and then it's running locally. And also it gives you an endpoint, like an actual deployed endpoint that's online, that's managed that you then plug into your, your Redwood backend. And this is something like, it's, it's unfortunate, it's, it's really hard to kind of like, you can't really show it like how exactly you do it because you have to like show your keys to do it. Sure. So it's like figuring out these kind of like demo flows is always, is always a bit of a challenge, but um, that's, that's, all you're, that's all you're doing. So. Once you kind of like figure out the the workflow, it's like getting it spun up and connected is like a matter of minutes. It's it's really really cool. That's awesome. And then I assume if there was um like a custom service to a custom API you're trying to interact with that is not something that steps in is created, is there a way to to kind of hit a custom endpoint? Like yeah, it's like I, I made you can a custom. Feed in, you can feed in any endpoint you want. You can be it like a, a REST endpoint, you feed it in another GraphQL endpoint, you feed it in like a database URL. There's, oh, that's the whole kind of point is that it stitches together whatever backend you want into this one unified GraphQL endpoint that you can then hit from your from your front end or from your API backend. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Awesome.
All right. Well, thanks, thanks, so, thanks much. so much, Jim. It was a real pleasure to be here. It's a uh, Jim and I go back from like many jam stack and spelt meetups. We're both big spelt fanboys as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was very cool to get to get to present this for for your audience. And I know that a lot of people here are very into like APIs and kind of jam stacky stuff. And, and that's what we're really aiming for here with steps. And so feel free to, to hit us up. We're at steps .com or um, steps and underscore dev on Twitter. And um, oh, awesome. Sounds like I introduced someone to plenty, which is very cool. We did a, a plenty episode on FS jam. So um, check that out as well. I'll go ahead and drop that in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I yeah, appreciate you doing the funny marketing, Anthony. <laughs> That's great. Anytime. Um, great. Well, thanks everyone for uh, for coming by and, and hanging out with us. Um, oh, so Anthony dropped the fsjam.org. Uh, That's a podcast that he runs in the to the chat. Check out that plenty that plenty episode if you want to hear about that. Um, but there's a ton of good episodes on there. Um, like like. Uh, Anthony talks with the founder of Redwood and a bunch of other folks, Blitz.js founder. And um, yeah, it's really a great podcast. Thanks. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to, with that, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, uh, I'll get these posted um, uh, hopefully today or tomorrow. So people can check these out on YouTube for anyone who missed the meeting.